So, uh, yeah, I should probably talk about node lists today. A node list in JavaScript is a static collection of HTML elements. They can be created by using query selector all. We can select elements by an ID, a class, or an element type. Node lists are similar to an array, but they don't have a built-in map, filter, or reduce method. They do have a for each method at least though. An important thing to note with node lists is that they won't update automatically to reflect changes to the DOM. For example, if you were to remove an element from the DOM and it's within a node list, you would also have to separately remove that element from the node list. So what we'll do in this example is create four buttons. They'll all have the same class. We'll have button one with a class of, I don't know, what's a good name? My buttons, the class. All right, let's copy this button, paste it three additional times. We'll have button two, button three, button four. And I'm going to add a little bit of CSS to these buttons. Let's select the class of my buttons. I'll increase the font size so you can see it. Font size for REM. Add a little bit of margin, 10 pixels. Remove the border, border none. Smooth the corners with border radius, 5 pixels. Add some padding, 10 pixels by 15 pixels. I'll change the background color to something blue. Background color blue, but I'll select HSL values. I'll turn the lightness to like 60. Okay, that's decent. And the font color will be white. Okay, that's good enough for now. One way in which we can create a node list is by using query selector all. We've talked about this in a previous video, but I'll show you a few more advanced things we can do with node lists. We can select elements by an ID, a class, or an element type. We will create a node list of let buttons equals document dot query selector all. Let's select all elements by a class. We need to use dot then the class name, my buttons. We could select elements by an element type. If I would like to select all buttons, I would just type in button, the element type but I would like to select only elements by this class. Now that we have our node list, I am going to console.log my node list of buttons, and we'll take a look at it. Here's my node list. It contains four elements, button one, button two, button three, button four. We do have a length property, a few methods, entries for each, item, keys. These are all different methods. For each is what we're going to be using a lot. Here's how we can change the HTML and CSS properties of all elements within a node list. We can use the for each method of a node list and iterate through all of the elements. So we will take our node list of buttons, use the built in for each method, then write an arrow function. We are provided with an element arrow do something, but I'm going to rename element as button just so it's more easily understandable. During each iteration, we're provided with the current button. What would we like to do to that button? Well, let's change the background color button dot style dot background color. I'll set it to be green. That should update the color of all the buttons, not just one of them. We're iterating through all of the buttons within this node list, change all of their background colors to be green. Let's change the text content too. take each button access the text content, I will set it equal to be, I don't know, an emoji or something. Let's do that. The text content on all the buttons is going to change. Maybe let's append an emoji, not replace the text content. That's better. That is how you can add and change HTML and CSS properties with a node list. Use the for each method, then write an arrow function to do something. In a similar way, we're going to add an event listener to each button that will listen for a click. So again, we're going to take our node list of buttons, use the built in for each method. For each button, arrow, do this. We need to add an event listener to each button. We will take the parameter of button, add an event listener. Within our event listener, we have an event type and a callback to do something. The event type is going to be click. 
instead of a callback, we'll write an arrow function. We are provided with an event, arrow, do this. Event is provided to us through the web browser when something happens. We will access the event object's target, meaning the button that we click on. That's going to be our target. Access the style. Access the background color property. Let's set it to be red, or better yet, tomato, because I like tomatoes. Each button has an event listener. It will listen for click events. When we click on a button, the background color is going to change. We're going to add an event listener for mouse over and a mouse out. Let's begin with mouse over. Again, take our node list of buttons, use the for each method, for each button, arrow, do this. Take that button, add an event listener. With event listeners, we have an event type and a callback. The event type is going to be mouse over. When we hover our cursor over something, what would we like to do? We will write an arrow function. Event arrow do this. Let's access the events target. That should equal our button that we click on. Access the style. Access the background color. So with the current color, I'm going to go back to my CSS. I will copy this color, paste it, but make the lightness 10% darker. Now when we hover over one of the buttons, the background color is going to change. I'll set the lightness to like 40% to make it much more apparent. There, that's better. Now when I leave one of these buttons, I need to revert that color back to the original. Really, we can just copy all of this code. Replace mouse over with mouse out. And set the background color back to the original. Each button now has a mouse over and mouse out event listener. Here's how you can add an element to a node list. I will create a new button. Const new button equals document dot create element. What element are we creating? A button. So with creating and appending HTML elements, there's three steps. This is step one. We need to create that element first. Step two is to add any necessary attributes or CSS properties. So let's take our new button, change the text content of the button equal to be button five. I would like to give my new button a class of my buttons. We're going to access the class list property. New button dot class list. When working with an elements class, we work with class list, not class. So the class list equals the class of my buttons. Then we have step three. Now we have to append this element to the DOM. What is the parent element of this new button going to be? Well, in this case, it's going to be the body of my document. We're going to be adding a new button right here. The parent, the enclosing element, is the body in this case. Access our document, select the body, append child new button. And there's button five. Since we added our class of my buttons, that's why it has all these CSS properties. If I were to remove this line of code, we get the default appearance for a button. I'll talk more about class lists in the next video. There's a lot you can do with them. Now, if I was to console.log my node list of buttons, here's what we have. We have five buttons within our DOM, but within our node list, we have four buttons. Button one, two, three, four. Button five isn't within this node list. Node lists are a static collection. They won't update automatically to reflect changes to the DOM. Even though button five is within the DOM, we would need to manually add it to our node list if we want to work with it. So to do that, we can just use query selector again and select all elements by the class. So let's reassign buttons. Since we're reassigning buttons, that's why I declared buttons with let instead of const, so we're able to reassign it. Because if this was a constant, we couldn't change the elements within it. So 
So buttons equals document dot query selector all. Select all elements by a class. Class my buttons. And then again, let's console.log my node list of buttons. Inspect console. And there we go. Our node list has five elements. Button one, two, three, four, five. Even if you were to add an element to the DOM, that same element isn't going to be automatically added to your node list. I would recommend using query selector all again, just to update it. Here's how to remove an element from a node list when you click on it. We'll have to give all of these buttons an event listener. They will listen for a click event. When we click on one of these elements, remove it from the DOM and the node list. Here's how. Again, we will take our node list of buttons, use the built-in for each method, for each button within our node list, do this. Take each button, add an event listener. We are provided with an event type and a callback to a function. The event type that we're listening for is click. The callback is going to be an arrow function. We're provided with an event, arrow, do this. To remove an element from the DOM when you click on it, we will access our event object access the target, use the built-in remove method to remove it. So let's see if this works currently. Let's remove button two, one, four, three. So those buttons are gone, but let me show you something. I'm going to console.log my node list of buttons after each click. Even if I were to remove these buttons from the DOM, they're still within the node list. Even after all the buttons are gone, our node list still has four buttons. So we do have to update that manually. Here's an easy way how to do that. We're going to use query selector all again. We'll reassign buttons equals document dot query selector all. Select all elements from the DOM that have a class of my buttons. Then just to see if this works, let's console.log my node list of buttons. Now when we click on a button, it should be removed from the DOM and the node list. When I remove all the buttons, our node list is then empty. Alright everybody, so that is an introduction to node lists. They're a static collection of HTML elements. They can be created by using query selector all. We can select elements by an ID, a class, or an element type. They're similar to an array, but there's no map, filter, or reduce methods. And do remember that node lists won't update automatically to reflect changes to the DOM. And well, everybody, that is an introduction to node lists in JavaScript.